Now, my guest tonight is a woman with an incredible story who is nothing short of an inspiration. You have cancer. Three words that changed my world forever. I was 23, and after a late diagnosis, I stared a hairless and boobless life in the face. I've worked tirelessly for five years trying to save the lives of others. I can't be cured, but I need to keep working to make sure others can. I know the drugs can stop working at any time. Until then, I've got a lot of living to do. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Halenga. Pleasure. You're a boob champ. Thank you very much. It's a boob. What's that, boob champ? Does this give me sort of special license to? Uh... It's better than a blue Peter badge, but it won't get you free entry into anything. Does it allow me to sort of do things to boobs? <laughs> <laughs> Only with permission. Only with permission. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Excellent answer. But I would expect nothing less than Woman of the Year. Did you know that? Chris was recently voted Woman of the Year. Do you find yourself looking at these ladies thinking, oh, not as good as me? <laughs> Definitely not. If no. anything, I feel really awkward about the whole thing. You're possibly the most selfless lady I've ever... Like, I saw your documentary. I don't know if you've seen Chris's documentary. It's unbelievable. But the moment that you were diagnosed, which is just heartbreaking, the biggest worry for you was telling your twin sister. Yes. It's just unbelievable. Which you wouldn't understand unless you have a twin. And I know that your brother and sister are twins, aren't they? They are. So they'd probably understand, but... It's like no other relationship that you have. Yeah. And, um, yeah, breaking it to her was the hardest. Most people in that situation wouldn't think about themselves. And, you know, completely understandably, but the fact that, that you put her before you is kind of beautiful. Thanks. It is. <laughs> no, but it is. It's just, I was watching, I was crying my eyes out. Um, was, I... I'm sort of sat there thinking, I, I've got to meet this lady, and she's ridiculously selfless. I don't know how I'm going to be funny around her. Oh, if anything, it's great to talk about cancer in a comedy environment. It's refreshing, and... I mean, oh, I, get to, I get to talk about boobs all the time, and it's great, and I, I don't, well, so I don't do really I. like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's great. Now, I notice you've got a... Uh, uh, a glittery turd. You've got a glittery turd. What's that? Um, this was an award that my twin sister gave me, and it's a special recognition award, ultimate turd glittering. <laughs> <laughs> That's really sweet. Um, yeah, she special recognition. polished that herself and everything. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's worryingly warm, that's what I would say. They actually laid one out just before. <laughs> <laughs> we really like the saying, um, you can't polish a turd, but you can roll it in glitter. And um, because I will never deny that having, you know, cancer is absolutely rubbish, but um, we get to do some really cool stuff because of it. Well, that's the amazing thing, because basically, were you like nine months into your diagnosis when you thought, I'm going to start a charity? One month, actually. One month? <laughs> yes. See, look at that, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so it was just after I started chemotherapy and I was thinking long and hard about why no one ever told me to check my boobs and um, why I never had that conversation with my friends and, and I realised actually no one was educating about it in schools and none of the breast cancer charities were educating young people. Because that's the thrust of it, isn't it? You basically want young people to check themselves yeah. because they don't think it could happen to them. Yeah, that was, that was really important at that time to kind of think, actually, I got breast cancer. I could do something about it, I should have been told. And yeah, my breast cancer was found really late. It was found at stage four by the time right. it was found. I'm bloody lucky to still be here, but I think I... It's, I'm re the reason I'm here is because I'm, I've still got lots to do with Copperfield. Do you get much contact with people? Do they sort of say that you saved my life? That must be amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, very yeah. special. Yeah. Um, yeah, when someone says, because of you, I check my boobs, and I've been diagnosed with early stage breast cancer. Yes, awesome. And um, the first time we got one of those emails was in 2010, so it was not long after I was diagnosed. And I thought, holy shit, what we're actually doing makes sense. And, oh, I admit, totally. and we need to keep doing this. Um, and so I have been doing it <laughs> for six years. Exactly. <laughs> now, we've got some, we've got some of your uh, accoutrements here. Is this... What's this? <laughs> Just because everyone needs a bosom for a pillow. Oh, nice. <laughs> exactly. I thought it was going to be uh, breast I thought... uh, We have that at Boob HQ, yeah. Boob HQ, where's that? In Bermondsey, in London. Yeah. Nice. Now, these are absolutely fascinating, these. <laughs> because, so these are boobs. 
<laughs> but it's just kind of... Don't you think there's something quite <laughs> tender, yeah. you know? Yes, but we actually use them as dodgeballs. As dodgeballs? Yeah. <laughs> just so... imagine a slow motion, one of these, wanging you across the face. <laughs> we we on, make that on, a reality. Go on, go on, try no, it. Go on. Go on. See. Properly do it. Oh, no! Go on. Oh, I'm going go to miss. Oh! <laughs> What was so beautiful about that is you went, oh, I'm going to miss, and then threw it harder than anyone's ever thrown anything. <laughs> so, how, how do I check myself? Because don't 400 men get...? Yeah, 400 men are diagnosed. So how do I check so myself? It's about getting to know what's normal for you, so you have to have a good look and a good feel regularly, so you'd notice if something wasn't right. And I, whenever I you do be... talks yeah. and stuff, yeah. I, I just grab my boobs immediately. It's just but like you know, I'm so envious because ladies do that. So you grab your boobs, yeah. and like you see, like, ladies grab each other's boobs, and it's a laugh. And it's wonderful all the time. No, no, no. But <laughs> we've, we've seen videos. There's videos yeah. where you grab at each yeah. other. If it was a testicular cancer charity, no, <laughs> no like, like, uh, do you know what? there'd be a fight. There would be a fight. It's I kind think of. You should start it. But I'm so envious that you, you're so at home and you touch each other, and it's well, men can't know. do that. Men can't. Touch well, it's each not, other. It's not just that you can't touch each other, it's because you're really crap at talking about stuff like that. And. <laughs> apart from that time. Absolutely. <laughs> you like now, I've got a thing here. Uh, you know, you wanted to see a slow mo of uh, a boob <gasps> being thrown in my face. <laughs> well, apparently, we have That's one. Amazing. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow. That's oh, the... shit. Fucking hell, I really. <laughs> Freak the fuck out of me! I was like, "What? Ah, it's me!" <laughs> I took that so bad. I'm on telly. That was the highlight of your career, right there. It was. Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for coming on the show, ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful Chris Colombo. <laughs>